Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at unpacking a recent malware sample that uses a compiled auto IT script to performance packing. When performing any sort of malware analysis, one of the first steps that is often necessary is to determine the type of obfuscation that that particular artifact has employed. When it comes to analyzing PE files, portable executable, then packing is oftentimes one of the first techniques that malware authors will use. Packing is simply a method that is used to hide the true functionality in some sort of an outer program. So you could think of it almost like embedding the real malware inside of another program. The importance of recognizing packing is so that we can unpack the sample. If we do not unpack the sample, then we're left to analyze that outer program. And oftentimes then we're wasting our time analyzing the wrong code, the unpacking code, as well as it makes it far more difficult to gain any insight into what the program is doing. With this particular sample, we can see that the program we're going to be analyzing is in fact a PE file, as indicated here in the process activity. Of course, there's many ways in which we could identify the file type for the program that we're analyzing. Trying to gain some additional insight, we can look at other behaviors that this program may exhibit, because the process activity is quite limited in this case. We can see there are a couple of HTTP requests to what appear to be relatively legitimate looking domains. Of course, it's very common for malware authors to abuse legitimate websites in order to host additional payloads or stage additional parts of their malicious infrastructure. We can also look at the threat tabs, which provides insight through IDS alerts into the activity of this particular program. In this case, we do get some insight here and that an auto IT Windows automation tool user agent was present. Outside of that though, all we really know is that this program appears to have downloaded another executable or DLL. Another important indicator that is provided here in any.run is this tag for auto IT. This means that during the process of analysis, any.run has identified indicators that this program is using an auto IT script. You can search in any.run by that tag, and you'll see that there are, at least at the time of this recording, quite a few samples that were tagged by auto IT. So it's not uncommon to see auto IT being abused by these malicious actors. Auto IT is actually a legitimate scripting language used by system administrators and others to automate common tasks in their Windows environments. So this can make the detection of malware that's using Auto IT a little bit tricky because the simple use of Auto IT doesn't necessarily mean that that program is in fact malicious. Let's look at some other ways in which we could analyze this file before we jump into the unpacking process. Using PE Studio, we can get some good insight into the overall behavioral indicators, things that stand out or that mark this file as particularly malicious. We can look at the virus total results and seeing that again at the time of this recording, we have 30 of 70 antivirus vendors indicating that this is a malicious file, it seems much more likely that it is in fact malicious. When it comes to detecting packing though, there are several techniques that can be employed. Looking at the different section names, we can do that with PE Studio. The names of the sections and the entropy can be two very common tells that a program is in fact packed. And you can actually identify some of the more prevalent packers by their section name. The entropy can also be a tell, and that the higher the entropy, the more likely that that section contains obfuscated code. Non-packed binaries generally have a lower measure of entropy. You can also look at libraries and imports. And again, generally speaking, having fewer imports and fewer libraries means that we're looking at a program that is packed. Because the unpacking routine, generally speaking, doesn't need a lot of functionality in order to perform the unpacking process. Once we've unpacked our sample, then we will see a greater number of these libraries and imports. We can also oftentimes look at strings. And very similar to libraries and imports, the fewer the strings, the more likely it is that something is packed or obfuscated. Unfortunately though, not all of these indicators are a guarantee. And it really just takes time and experience dealing with packed malware and learning how to interpret and understand all of the different information that's being presented to you. With this sample though, we have a pretty big tell. And that is in the resources section, PE Studio has identified an auto IT script. This is quite helpful because at this point, we likely suspect that this is malicious and we'd like to take our analysis to the next step by extracting this auto IT script and performing some analysis on it. Before we do that, let's take a look at this program in IDA Pro. Auto IT scripts generally come in two flavors. 
One is the compiled script and a standalone interpreter that can be used then to execute the script. The other is that compiled script inside of a standalone executable, which means that executable actually contains the full auto IT interpreter. This example contains the compiled script with the full auto IT interpreter in a standalone executable. If you put that program into IDA Pro, you'll be able to observe that we have a considerable amount of functionality here just simply by looking at the functions. From main, we can also look at the cross-reference graph from. This is something that I'll regularly do in order to get a better understanding for the overall functionality, the scope of the program that I'm dealing with. For this program, there is an extensive amount of functionality, and what we're actually looking at is the auto IT interpreter. While as interesting as it might be to reverse engineer that interpreter, it's something that I'm not very interested in doing right now, because my original goal was to understand and analyze the actual auto IT script that was embedded inside. So that leaves us with the question, what do we do next? Well, in the case of auto IT scripts, we have the ability to find a program that will extract that compiled script and allow us to see it in plain text. I've come up with two sources. The first one is this zip, which you can find on my GitHub, that contains this version of auto IT. It was up until a relatively recent version that auto IT actually included a program that would then extract that compiled script from an executable. The other one is one that I found on another researcher's GitHub. I have less confidence in the source that this came from, but I'm already analyzing malware in my analysis VM, so I found that this version here actually works a little bit better. Running our exe to AUT program, it will present you with a blank canvas. All that's left to do is to take your program that you think is packed by auto IT and drop it into that canvas. This will do a couple of things for you. First, if it can find that script, it'll go ahead and display the content here in the window. The second default behavior is to actually extract it and write it with a .au3 extension to the location where you ran that original binary, in this case to my desktop. We can now open that script with a text editor and apply syntax highlighting. You can also use the officially supported editor, Skype, which is available on the Auto IT website. In this case though, we don't really need to go much further. We can just do some quick analysis of the script in Visual Studio Code, and we'll see that we have our domains where the original HTTP request came from. Even though you didn't see the full URL in the any.run output due to the way that I cropped the screen, you can see that now to request to a couple of supposed text documents, although we already know that likely these were executables. It uses the inet read function in order to read that content. Then it converts that to a string, prefixing it with a 0x, so it's making it a hex string. Next, the call to DLL struct create is called, and this uses the length of that content that was returned from the HTTP request. This becomes a byte array, and because it was prefixed with a 0x, it's treated as hexadecimal values. From there, the data is copied into that structure, and eventually that code is executed. So it appears that this executable was simply used as another dropper, requesting a payload from a host and executing it to further the attack. The focus here, however, though, was really on being able to unpack malware that uses auto IT scripts so that you can pull them out and continue to analyze them. The amount of obfuscation you'll find in these scripts varies, and I've come across some pretty extensive obfuscation here. Because there are so many different techniques, it's hard to present one approach for analyzing these auto IT scripts. In any case, I hope this has added another technique to your malware analysis and reverse engineering toolkit, and look forward to speaking to you in the next video.